I have to admit it, I've come to a point lately where I stick to the software I'm used to and feel convenience in. Maybe you can relate to this, but it's really about not branching out enough to the latest and greatest software that comes around the corner. So I wonder why this is happening. And I think my feeling is so many tools out there and many of them is doing the same thing, but it's hard for you to find which exactly you should focus on. And I think this is a big obstacle. We should never be defined by the tools that we use. It's really whatever you can use to get your mind out there with all the ideas and thinking you have, the better the tool will be. So in this case, no tool is the best tool, but we need to have these in order to express ourselves digitally. But I feel like I have so many ideas if I just knew everything I can do in the computer. So for me, it's the software is my bottleneck. That's my limitation. I have so many other ideas that I really don't know how to make them. I'm just trying to figure it out along the way. So in this case, I'm still in sketch, but I don't really feel like I'm fulfilled with that experience. I feel like there's so many other communities and software out there. There's more progressive. They're launching features based on the community. It's just more forward thinking. Okay, so let's break this habit and learn something new. Let's branch out to something that we haven't used before. And for me, that is Adobe XD. I'm opening up for the first time in one and a half years. Back then, I wasn't very impressed, but nowadays, it's some very interesting stuff coming their way. So I wanted to take on the challenge to open up a animation flow on my previous project, Melio, a payment startup from Israel, Tel Aviv, and take that into Adobe XD and recreate it and see if I can make it interactive and get the same feeling and touches that I did in After Effects. So that's what I'm gonna showcase now. I recorded the entire flow from start to finish. So follow along and be sure to stay until the end where I'm gonna showcase the both results side by side and talk through some key findings and reflections. Looking forward and let's get right into it. All right, so now we're in Adobe XD and I'm gonna jump between Sketch and this program now to translate any design I had from Sketch into XD. So as you can see, it's gonna be a little tricky here because the files and layers is not organized in the same way. So a lot of this is just for reference and I'm just need to recreate this from scratch. And then in general, I can mention this already, the main animation principle I'm gonna do here is to auto animate between artboards. So basically, whatever is happening between two artboards, that's gonna auto animate. And it's very simple. It's just a click of a button and then some settings with durations and delays, but then it's just gonna do the magic in between. On the way there, you have to be really organized when it comes to your layers and everything has to have the same names, otherwise it will not understand that they are connected. So that's what I'm doing right now, just laying out all these elements and ticks and close buttons and whatever is on the screen you're making these in Adobe XD layers instead of Sketch. So there we basically have the first screen ready and we group this in a nice folder. You just move it over to the first artboard and the proper name. Then we just need to create this pay a bill button. Everything else is uh, some messy Sketch uh, translated files, but use this button is the only one we need to trigger this first auto animate. Now we can make this first interaction, going up into the prototype tab and clicking on that one and drag it over to the next artboard. Going up in the right sidebar, click auto animate, select one second, and I want it to do ease in and out to get that smooth transition. And then let's preview and see how that feels like. And it goes a little fast. I think it actually jumped back to 0.3 seconds there instead, but we can go back and use adjust this later. But for now, let's continue with this amount payment screen and copy this artboard four times and this is going to demonstrate each of the number increasing while you are tapping so you can trigger animation both in taps but also in keystrokes so a really nice feature here so i select the first one on one and then the last three have the zero so let's play this back click pay bill one zero 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 so there we go one thousand and there's some cross delay there, a cross dissolve uh, animations. Let's change that to just a snap because we don't want them to bleed together. 
And then we continue on the next flow and that is the deliver method. So we go back to sketch, drag in a file here that's gonna be all messed up in the layers. So we're gonna recreate this, use the same shadow box as before and write down the type and match this to the previous design. So there really we got the groundwork ready with one card. We can just duplicate this and then swap out the text and the icons. And this is just a process that I feel is really exploiting any flaws that you had from previous iteration. Even improving some designs by copying yourself and making another revision is really powerful to just go back and make another round on it. And here I'm calculating the width of this uh, progression bar in the background, which is gonna demonstrate how much you are paying from the uh, entire bill. So the bill is on around 4,000 and we just wanna pay 1,000. So around the fourth of the screen should be filled with this white payment field. And each time it's gonna increase in 200 pixels, as you can see. And that looks pretty nice. And I think one downside here with XD already is I want a snap uh, transition on the text, but I want the easy in and out on the field. But I don't believe you can do two different easings and two different behaviors on one auto animate. So I think this is one of my key downsides here in the beginning. And I used to track what I did here. I moved over this screen to the previous one, move it in the bottom, and I put this on 0% in opacity. And then on the next one is 100. So there you go, you got that movement from the bottom and up. And then next is to animate what happens if you click one of the cards. So this is a really good one in XD. I like how they do hover states and default states. So in this case, I want it to be a two pixel border when you hover or click. And then after you've done that to all of these backgrounds, we can go ahead and disable all these so they are white. And then we're gonna make the trigger on the top left card here to go to the next screen. We're gonna do 0.5 seconds. And then we're gonna go into this card and select it as the hover state. And then we're gonna go down in the bottom and select that progression bar and add another 200 pixel to that width. And then we can see how this looks like. I'm gonna click one of these and then it progresses and you can go to the next step. And that is the process date. So this is a fairly complex screen and I decided to not do this one in this specific speed recording. But actually I spent some time after this and made it into the side by side comparison that you will see in the end. So let's stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, let's continue on this specific flow. And that is to select the funding source for this payment. So this app is all about selecting bank account, check, credit card, debit card. They do all of it and solving all of that for you. And this is just to copy from the previous step. All the boxes is very much the same. The only difference here is that we have some different names and different icons for banks and so on. So I'm copying in the bank logos. I'm making sure the progress bar has moved the step in the bottom and we are pretty much ready to go. Uh, to do the same here, just selecting the hover state on one of them on the top left and then clicking and then go to the next step. And that is our confirmation page for you to confirm that everything looks great and uh, ready to be paid. So I'm using the same box as we had before, increasing the width here to a full width and also making them short in height and then changing all the content here based on the sketch design reference. So pretty straightforward stuff. And the only thing we need to do here is to basically click the next button. So there's no interaction with these specific pieces. So the only small detail to do is to add a green instead of purple to indicate it's the end of the flow and also make sure that it says complete. Moving it again in the layers here on the left, as you can see, it's very ordered now. Step one, two, three, four, five. And then also animating the last step on the progression bar in the bottom, and then making sure that everything is uh, synchronized in layers. And then once you click this, you're gonna end up in a loading state for you to wait a little bit until it does the thing in the background and then end up on the confirmation that everything is paid. So here I'm dragging in the loader from the Melio logo, just uh, recreating this fast with some shapes and uh, making them purple. And I'm gonna copy this into the screen itself to do some animations, but in general, I feel like this is another con with XD that you can't really do these advanced loaders that they spin around multiple times and 
transitions. So in this case, it's just going to be simple movements and scaling and opacity of these shapes. So that's something I missed from After Effects where you really have control of everything. But again, I'm going to come to this in the end here. But I think XD is more about the prototype, the interactivity of testing out a concept and validate it rather than getting those high fidelity and final vision pieces together. So then once this is done, that was actually another auto animate based on time rather than interaction. So you said after 0.3 seconds, I animate to the next screen. And then we are going to end up on the last last screen here. And that is the success and confirmation page that everything went through. Money is on the way and you are ready to go. And that is basically dragging in these components again from sketch and placing one in the bottom and then the next to the top. And this is how it feels like. So that was actually all of it. And just to wrap this up, here comes a side-by-side -side comparison of the original After Effects render with this new recreated XD piece. So it's super exciting to see this comparison of the outcome. And really we can see a lot of differences here when it comes to the easings and the sequential animation on the left side. Some things come in faster and they come in after each other. On the right side on the XD, you don't really get that control of the easings and you're more limited. But really, if you look at it, you really get a sense of this flow, even though it doesn't really matter in this situation. You're more into the interactive piece to have something tangible to try out. It really gives me the memory of the Masterclass product that we made, where we had the beta apps live in our hands, where we can try it out. And yeah, sometimes it actually beats After Effects. It doesn't matter if you have an amazing render on your hard drive. It doesn't matter if it can't be tried and validated. So in this case, XD wins on the interactive piece. I'm still grudged because I, I really love these details, you know, in the animations and all the craft. But it seems like we can't get everything in one tool. So as I said in the beginning, after Effects might be for creating, simulate and demonstrate visions brought to life. This is my words on this, really to have full control, all the fidelity and all the final touches. It's definitely used for development handoff, but most specifically demonstrating a vision and make people excited to see this live and ready. Then you go into the production and make it feasible. And that brings me to Adobe XD. And that is more to create interactive prototypes for validation and testing. So really there's no right and wrong here. You can mix and match any way you want with the tools. So next time you wonder what tool should I use, then ask yourself, what do I need this for? And how is the desired final outcome? So in my case, I use After Effects a lot. And that is because I do a lot of conceptual work with presenting to pitches and demonstrating visions to sell in new projects and get people excited by the, all the possibilities that we can make and doing this with the highest possible fidelity. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope you found this useful. Let me know in the comments with your thoughts on the process, the outcome or any questions you might have and I'd love to catch up with you there. Give me a thumbs up on this video if you liked it to help me out here on YouTube. And as always, be sure to subscribe if you want to see more and turn on the notifications so you don't miss anything coming up. And I'll see you very soon again.